the result season for 202324 kicks off with TCS's results soon. In this video, we'll try to go beyond the English part of published numbers and news and try to understand if TCS continues to be a fantastic investment in the IT landscape. It is still the largest company, but is it still the best in terms of giving us great returns, a fantastic CAGR in the years to come? When it comes to analyzing companies for investment decisions, there are at least three kinds of investigators. Superficial ones, they look for sales growth, profit growth, market cap, price to earnings ratio, industries P as a comparison, dividend, dividend yield. Note that these are also serious investors, not beginners. A lot of people, in fact, most of the investors fall in this category. The second one is deep down who go beyond five quarters. Instead of P, they look for P, G, they look for ROE, ROC debt to equity trend. The third one which are also irritating a lot are inquisitive ones. They ask for mathematics part, they ask for details of other income for example, they ask for abrupt changes from pattern, what is the explanation. So they go beyond numbers, they try to understand the numbers and these are the people who can see the future with lot more clarity and hence their decision making quality will be lot higher. Here I would like to quote something from the Almanac of Naval Ravikant book, specific knowledge cannot be taught but it can be learned. This is the book I would highly recommend if it is not in your bookshelf, then it should be. I'll leave the link in the description below if you want to buy. Do buy the hardcover. Also tell me in the comments what kind of investor you are. Note there is nothing right or wrong in being superficial or deep down if you are not inquisitive. Let's first try and understand if as an investor, the size of company in terms of market cap matters to you, whether you should invest in large caps compared to mid caps and small caps. Let's assume there is a large cap company, 1000 crore in size, doing pretty well. They have just posted their results, 10,000 crores of sale and a profit of 2000 crore, insane 20%. You decide to invest in this company, 1 lakh rupees. There is another mid cap company founded by four nerds. You have heard they are doing pretty well as well. They are a lot smaller in size. 10,000 crore is a market cap. Their sales is just 5% at 500 crore. P is double of the previous company. Their profit also is not 20%. It is lesser, 80 crores. Primarily because they have invested a bit into the sales pipeline and also in creating a bench for some of the upcoming projects. You decide to invest a smaller amount, but you still go ahead and put in 80,000 rupees. Fast forward one year, the first company grew by 20% to 12,000 crore sales and 2400 crore profit, phenomenal growth, your money becomes 1,20,000. The other company has also done well, their sales has increased to 70 crore, it is still minuscule compared to the size of the previous company, the profit has gone to 125 crore, you are wondering perhaps whether you should have put the 80,000 also in the previous company. Pause here, the profit may be lot lesser than the previous company, however it has increased by more than 50% year on year. Your investment in this case also has become 1,20,000. Note that in case one, your capital invested was 25% higher. So your return on your investment ROI is lot, lot higher in case two. Though it is a mid cap company, not a large cap company, it is growing lot faster than the large cap. Hence, your money is growing faster. One thing I want to highlight is that TCS very clearly says that any free cash flow, they will give it to the shareholders. This is mentioned in the director's report as the first point. The intention is very clear, reward the shareholder. If you have seen some of my previous videos, you will find these tables familiar. Don't worry too much about complexity or too many numbers. I'll just mention the key highlights. TCS is the number two company in India when it comes to Nifty. The second largest in IT space is Infosys. This graph shows two data elements. The yellow line is the TCS stock price over the last one month. If you see it has actually gone down, the volumes too have dipped a bit as shown by the trend line. Not a great sign if you are heading into your annual results, especially when the markets are making a new all time high every day. Somewhere around 2009 or 10, I think Infosys was 150% of TCS in size market cap. Now TCS is nearly two and a half times Infosys. The tides have reversed. Sales versus EPS graph, nothing big to show here. The blue number is a sales number. They've been going up since I was a kid probably. EPS graph is growing with the sales nearly at the same pace. The first graph shows equity share capital. Note that this period is when TCS gave one is to one bonus and the equity capital doubled. See this graph is something like this. The reason is TCS does buy back from time to time which reduces the amount of share capital in the market. Same thing happened here also. 
they bought back shares and hence the share capital reduced. This is a special graph, dividend payout. This is adjusted to the bonus. This axis is the percentage payout of dividend, which means whatever the company is earning, how much percent of that it is being given to the investors. Note that this graph was roughly around 40% couple of years back. This is nearly 100% here, which means whatever the company is earning as earning per share, that is being given out to the shareholders as a dividend. Now I'll talk about two important ratios. I'll not get too much into the maths part of it. Return on equity and return on capital employed. These texts are from investopedia.com, one of the best sources of knowledge. Return on equity is one of the major financial performance. The idea is that shareholders have certain equity in the company. Is it being utilized well by the management team in generating the net income? Net income should be increasing considerably for the shareholders equity that is deployed in the company. The next one is ROCE or return on capital employed. There is certain capital that is available for the management team to use. How much is the earning being generated on that capital? Is that growing continuously or at least being stationary? It should not reduce for sure. These ratios are also used to compare to peers from time to time. If there is a difference, then that should be understandable. Before I jump to the Excel part of it, before I jump to the Excel part of it, let me show you the analysis that I have already done. Our return on equity by year for TCS continuously going up. The red bars are the red bars are ROCE. More or less, they work proportionally. The orange line is the money I was talking about in the previous slides. I would want to highlight two things here. The blue numbers were 35, 38, 38 here. The red numbers were 48, 47, 48 here. Suddenly in Jan 22, these numbers jumped up. 43 and 55, 47 and 59. These numbers have shot up a lot. The sales have not increased that much. So how come the two measures of performance have improved suddenly? Two more things I would like to highlight here. The FI number between 2021 and 2022 fell. It fell again in 2023. One coincidence, the CFO changed in 2021. Is there any correlation? The main data sheet has all the data exported from screener. Cash flow tab which has details over the last few years for all the cash being generated from the operating activities. Return on equity and return on capital employed. These ratios is what I have showed have increased a lot from 38% to 43 and 47%. 47 and 48%, 55 and 59%. Investors love this number if it is growing. They primarily depend upon the equity share capital and reserves and the profit numbers which are there on the profit and loss tab. J12, let me show. J12. So this is net profit number. Let's go back to balance sheet now. When we go to ROCE, it talks about equity share capital reserves and borrowings. And on profit and loss tab, it talks about profit before interest and taxation. To ease the understanding, I have done the sum of equity share capital reserves and borrowings here. This is the row. There is clearly a decrease being shown here, 3%, 1%. This number was 40%, 21% here, 5% here. The percentage growth is decreasing. Why I am showing this? Suppose this ratio is A divided by B. Either you increase A or you reduce B. B is this number. So if you reduce the share capital, which means you buy back shares, go up here, 375 became 366, minor reduction. Or you reduce the reserves. You give a lot of dividend, the growth in reserves will go down. They are right now giving out each and every penny of EPS as dividend, which means no net new money is being added to the reserves. So the B part is going down. So if or net profit is not growing very fast, but you reduce your share capital plus reserves by a considerable amount, you will show higher growth in ROE and ROCE by simple use of mathematics. Here I did a bit of calculation, total dividend paid 42,000 crores is the dividend they have paid out based upon the total shares outstanding and the dividend payout ratios. When we went to cash flow, 41,000 was what they were generating. So more or less everything they earned has been given out. There is one line item that impacts the earnings of MNCs significantly at times, especially when the currency is not favorable. In this quarter, INR has become strong against all major currencies, be it USD, Euro or GBP. I picked the numbers from the annual reports of TCS, their average rates that they used in the previous quarter. 
and the geography distribution of their revenue. Based upon that, I personally felt that there will be an impact of 20 basis points to the results. They'll get less INR for the same work that they have done. Let's talk about the amount of research they undertake. First, let me talk about R&D. They have 2424 crores as the budget for R&D and innovation, which is roughly 1.3% of their total turnover. Sound like a decent number. However, if you extrapolate it to the number of employees they have, it comes down to roughly 40,000 per annum, slightly more than 3,000 rupees per month, including for international employees. This includes hardware, software, premises, everything that goes into R&D. Now, in the world of Gen AI, cloud, is this enough? I've been a chief technology officer for three companies. In my opinion, you need a lot higher budget if you want high quality people with the cutting edge skills. One more thing is they have clear focus on verticals. BFSI is about third of the size. In today's ecosystem, more and more people that are required are technical plus domain both expertise. But I went through the specific areas in which they are carrying out the R&D. It does not talk much about the functional domains. Here TCS has probably left it for the customer to figure out how to teach the people the domain. Expectations from the result this time. I don't intend to compete with the analyst. The numbers are approximate. Revenue for this quarter will increase from 60,583 crore last time to 61,000 crores. Expenses will increase to 45,000 crores. Net profit will increase to 12,000 crores, significantly higher, mostly on top of other income, which will increase. It was negative last time. Operating profit will increase from 16,388 crores to about 17,000 crores at an operating margin slightly higher, probably 28%. EPS last time was 30.56. This time it will go up to roughly 31.5 or 32. And most likely a special dividend will be announced. Whatever the company has earned in some ways over time, it will be returned back to the shareholders as dividend. Total annual cash flow from operations will increase from 41,965 crore to 45,000 crores approximately for the year. Now the problem areas according to me for TCS which are not evident in the numbers and I say it also as someone with about two and a half decades of tech experience and I have interviewed a lot of people from TCS tried to hire them over time. In not just in India but also globally fintech is on steroids. There is high end technology being deployed in fintech and banks these days. We can talk about it on the website that we have people, we have expertise but bottom line is these people are expensive. And in my experience, these are very difficult to afford even for the people who pay very well. I believe it is a challenge for TCS because they have to maintain parity of payments. The same problem is on the tech side also, AI, Gen AI, cloud, all the new terms which we hear, we've been hearing them for last two, three years now actually, are high on skills. And what is also happening is that team sizes, if you use these skills, are small. Earlier we used to talk about 1,000, 2,000, 5,000 people team sizes. These numbers are growing down rapidly. Even companies which need large IT sizes, they are breaking it down into smaller teams of 10, 15 size. A scrum team is not supposed to be more than 10 people. Scrum of scrum can be used, but people who are agile, they are scaling with lesser people. Also considering the hot skills required in the market, hiring fresher strategy, which has been there for decades for TCS, may not work because these skills are not taught in any college. The best I've seen freshers emerge out with these days is Python. Python can be used with ease with AI, Gen AI as well as cloud, but you need the hard skills that comes with experience. The training budget I mentioned is already 3000 rupees a month. It's not sufficient to impart this training in double quick time to make the people billable. The real cost of training these people will be borne by customers. Not a great thing. Also, I mentioned in the previous slide, these days, domain plus tech, the combination is what is in demand, not just tech part of it. For the last two decades, I've seen in the outsourcing industry that domain was left to the customer that is no longer working these days. Also, in terms of operations, the knock workers, L0, L1 supports, the toil part which requires thousands of people across multiple shifts, Saturday, Sunday workings, all those things are getting increasingly automated and eliminated. Humans don't do it any longer in most companies. This has been classically the model for the big four IT companies in India. The game is changing rapidly. Some key improvements, I'm too small to recommend them to a company like TCS, but these are what I feel. Cash utilization can be a lot better. They have one lakh crore on the balance sheet. Utilize it better. 
मे बी द सी एफ ओ नीड्स टू असिस्टेंट्स वन हु कैन फोकस ऑन ग्रोथ वाया एक्वायरिंग ऑफ कंपनीज सेकेंड वन कैन प्रॉब्ली गेट इन टू कैश फ्लोज देर कैन बी अ थर्ड पोर्शन लेफ्ट फॉर द सी एफ ओ टू डिस्ट्रीब्यूट एज डिविडेंट I somehow don't like the idea personally as an investor that the entire cash that the company is generating is being given out as dividends. The management is either getting older and they don't want to take risk at all, or they have no idea, no clues on how to grow the business beyond organically. Also, if you have read the book Elephants Can't Dance, it's a pretty old book in IBM's context. I think TCS is getting there. Too big to fail, too big to change. Sales wise, they definitely need some sort of inorganic growth. The cash is there. They need to acquire some companies which can supplement the sales. This used to happen five seven years back. To my knowledge, it's not happening right now. Attrition rate is thirteen percent. Maybe it needs to come down. Increase the incentives. Most money that an IT company spends is on people. Maybe that can go up two three percent. at reduce profitability is cost however retaining people may be more beneficial especially when it comes to domain plus technology knowledge i have been in the service industry most delivery managers laugh over attrition they say it is customers problem not our problem this doesn't work also tcs's website is filled with solution centric approach i think it is more marketing than reality customers can see through decisions in today's age need to be faster you can't wait for quarterly board meeting or annual board meeting for decisions you can't review strategies once in a year overall i would say tcs is not going anywhere no one is going to replace tcs they will continue to grow especially with the gdp growth in all geographies the current situation in us and europe may create a temporary problem in the next one or two quarters however it will increase the outsourcing for tcs and other it companies in india to benefit from however the model is under threat over a decade this has to evolve at a speed faster than what we see right now you can't keep investors happy by giving dividends alone and a single digit kind of growth in the long run other companies are breathing down their neck there will be a lot of companies who are niche not big but large in market cap they will not hesitate in in sourcing and no longer outsourcing in my personal capacity over last 3 or 4 months i have exited tcs and infosys completely i have moved my money to some other it companies who are not as big but are growing rapidly compared to these companies i'll talk about them when i discuss their results this is my personal opinion my personal appetite please don't change your decision based upon this video take your own independent decisions thanks for watching